Hi, my name is Stacy Brodzik. I'm the apprentice chair for the PNBOA, and I'm the lead trainer for the apprentice program. We're going to take you through some lessons in all of the signals and mechanics that officials need to do well on the floor. So come along with us and let's get started. Where you can hear me, so I don't have to scream. Speak louder. The camera can't hear you. Hi. Okay, so thanks for coming back. Thanks to the four or five new people who weren't here last week. Um, we'll do a really quick review of what we did last week, like, like in five minutes, and then we're going to cover the new stuff. Okay? Um, make sure that I got you on my attendance sheet, okay? Um, make sure you have your whistles on. Make sure you have your masks on. We good? We have a couple guests tonight. We have... Where did, this is Dick Pickett. He's going to be helping. Once you start, once you finish your training and you start refing games, he said he's going to help us out by showing up at your gyms and maybe giving you some feedback. Because once you're out there, I'm not there anymore. These guys aren't there anymore. So he's going to help out with that, okay? Cool. Um, and I think everybody else you saw last week. Nobody else knew, right? Okay. Real quickly. Um, violations. Who's going to tell me how to call a violation with a, with a demo? Go ahead. Let's try that one again. Uh, who was here last week? I wasn't. That's okay. Right here. The whole thing? The whole thing. Call travel. Oh, man. He did the safety guy. Travel, red, and white. Okay. So you blow your whistle with an open hand. You say and you demonstrate what the signal is. You say the direction we're going to go, okay? And you point to where we're going to bring the ball and bounce. Every time. We're going to do that every time, okay? Who's going to show me how to call a foul that was here last time? Alston. Select one, two shots. Okay. So, whistle, fist, okay? And then what you say, color number, foul, consequence. So just like he did, he got tweet, color red, 14, color number, foul, hit, consequence, two shots. Just remember, color number, foul, consequence, every time you blow your whistle for a foul. Okay? And you can practice those on your own. If you have questions, ask me, but we're not doing that today. Okay? And also last week we went over primary coverage areas. There's an assignment, you know, at the end of the of the outlines for the classes, there's a reading assignments. So if you read the pages I ask you to read, you'll be caught up on that. And then you can ask them questions if you have them. Okay? So the first thing we're gonna do tonight is jump balls. You wanna grab the ball for me real quick? Okay, so there's two officials, right? There's a, a referee and an umpire. The referee tosses the ball. The umpire stands right in front of the scorer's table at mid-court. Okay? So, the responsibility of the tossing official, okay, he's going to look over. In fact, let's just do a real quick demo. Two of the guys. Randy and Aaron. And just make believe the center is right here. Okay. And make believe the table is right here. Just for now so they can yep. see what's going on. Okay? So he's, they're going to face each other. He's going to ask him if he's all set, which means he's talked to the table, make sure everybody's all set. Puts his hand up because he's going to chop the clock in. He chops the clock when the ball is touched. Okay, now when it's tossed. Yeah. When it's touched in the circle or outside of the circle? Right here. When he right. chops, does he chop? Does he chop outside of the circle when it touches someone outside of the circle, or just, just when, it, when, when it's touched? Okay. Yeah. He's by the scoreboard. Yeah. yeah no, I, I I know what you're asking. Okay. So then he's gonna blow his whistle away from the players because it's really loud, and if you blow right in somebody's ear, it hurts. Okay. So you turn your head. Okay, and then you step right between. What do you guys pull here? Okay? And then he tosses the ball. Huh? 
<laughs> Thank you. And then he tosses the ball, and as soon as somebody touches it, he chops. Okay? That's all pedagogical, right? Okay. So what happens after the ball is touched? Usually, the guy in front of the table is going to become the lead, which means he's going to run to the end line in the direction the ball is going. Okay? And usually, the tosser is going to be the trail, uh, diagonal from where the lead is. Okay? Sometimes it's messed up because the ball goes in a weird direction and you have to just improvise. But most of the time, that's how it works. Okay? So responsibilities. This guy is looking to make sure none of the players around the circle enter the circle before the ball is touched. Okay? He's making sure that... How many times can the two people in the circle touch the ball? Twice. Okay? Can they catch it? They cannot catch the ball. Okay? Do they have to be facing each other? No. No. They don't have to be facing. Now, if they're both not facing each other, we have a problem. We've got to ask, ask them to either face each other or get to more people. Okay? But they don't have to face each other. Um, so, so this guy is, is, making, is thinking of all those possible violations and making sure they don't happen. Okay? This guy is just trying to stay out of the way. Because the, the players are right on top of him, and chances are he could get knocked in the head, or he could trip one of them, so he's just trying to get out of the way. One thing I didn't say is as soon as he blows his whistle before he tosses, let the whistle out. Let the whistle out so you don't crack a tooth when somebody hits you with an elbow. Okay? So we're going to get in two lines, and we're, we're going to take turns um, being, being the tosser and the person at the table. Okay? And uh, so just split yourselves in half. And we'll make, we'll make this the center circle. Yeah. And we'll make, we'll make, we'll make the square over here. So this is, this is where the trails get there. Up by. Okay, so who's, who's going to be right here? Are, are you taking half of them? Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. So we're just gonna have one by one come in and toss, right? So you're taking them? Yeah, taking yeah. Them? Okay. All right, you guys. So one in front of Switch your guys in half. Tossers. Choppers. Give me like three of you. Four of you, right here. Okay. And um, who else is here to help? Just you with me? Okay. Away. In the first half, you go away from your bench. In the second half, you go towards your bench. Okay? Okay, so let's go through the whole sequence. You're the front of the line. Okay, so your arms up. Check with the table. So just look around. Look at him. He's going to nod.
Okay? So what happens when it gets when it gets tipped this way? Where do you go? If it gets tipped this way, then you're coming down to the end line. And you're gonna be over there as the trail. Okay? Lead trail. Okay, next two. Step back, I need some room. We'll be right here, you know, because we're trying to want to get the ball. Just say, hey, move back a little, guys. Okay, Daniel, get right up, get right in here. There we go. Remember, when the kids get taller, it's like, oh, 
seen on TV or in a gym somewhere, but it's not in the book, it's, it's a personal choice. And that is, when you're the person standing here to toss the ball, blow your whistle. Some people say red this way, white this way. If you want to do that, that's fine, um, especially with little kids so that it's clear in their heads. But in the mechanics manual, it's not specified, okay? So I just want to make sure you knew that. Um, is there anything that came up on your side that you want to talk about? Uh, no, we're, no we're, we're, just, we're just like practicing different situations, like where the person grabs it or that toss, we, we toss it again. Okay. Okay. Remember, if you're the table table side official and it's a horrible toss, call it back. Okay. What happens if you call it back and there's uh, the clocks run down two seconds? Do you do anything with the clock? Why not? But you're, you're starting again. You say you restart the clock? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, make sure that you look in the in the rule book. Uh, light ball, dead ball, I think rule six, rule five, six. Um, it talks about all the violations, all the requirements for a jump ball. And it's crazy. Who can move on the circle? Who can't move on the circle? You know, you can't have somebody, you can't have two people here yep. with their legs crossing each other. You can't, they can't stand there. You can't, I can't stand right behind right. him. Yep. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Okay, so make sure you read it. Make sure you read the case, please. Okay, and practice your tosses. Oh okay? yeah, if you have two players of the same color, somebody can get in between. Correct. Oh, we can get that space. You have two players, same color. If somebody wants to get in between that from the opposite team, you've got to allow that. That's only on the circle, though. Yep. Not if you're more than three feet away, it's just normal. Okay? Okay, the next thing on our list, hi, Roger. The next thing on our list is throwings. And I always like doing these because it's kind of a coordination exercise. Um, right? So we do, we do throw-ins a million times a game, okay? So this one has to be part of your muscle memory so you're not thinking about it all the time, okay? So for a throw-in, let's say I'm, gonna, I'm the person throwing the ball in, okay? First of all, he's going to check with his partner to make sure his partner's ready. Make sure there's a five and five, okay? Now with the hand closest to me, he's going to hand me the ball. And then he's going to put this arm up and count away so he doesn't hit me counting. Okay? He's also going to move away a little from where he's going to step back. Yeah. Okay? So, so he's counting like this, right? And as soon as the ball is released, he stops counting, but he can't chop until it's touched. Okay? So that's where this coordination thing comes in because everybody's going to be like, they don't know which arm is doing what. Okay? So, a couple things about the other mechanics of a throw-in. If the ball goes out on your sideline, the sideline that you're responsible for, then you're going to do the throw-in. Okay? So if you're the lead official on the end line, then if the, the ball goes out on the end line, you're going to do the throw-in. Okay? If you're the lead over here, this is your sideline, right, for out of bounds. So if the ball goes out on the sideline, you're going to bring it in. 
If it's below the free throw line, you just bounce it up the sideline, no problem. If it's above the three point line, then you're going to come up and become the trail, and this person is going to become the lead. Okay? The trail takes their sideline. Okay? All the throw ins in the backcourt, the trail takes. So if there's a press, Randy's coming up this side of the floor, and the ball gets knocked out over there. He's going to go over there for the throw-in, and then the lead's going to go to the opposite side. So that's the two-person. That's all we're doing here is two-person. Okay. Um, uh, if you do a side, if you do a throw-in anywhere except the front court end line, I encourage you to bounce the ball. Okay. It, get, it does a couple things. One, you're not going to hit the guy, okay? Two, it gives you a bit greater peripheral vision, okay? Because you don't want to be staring at this guy. You want to be looking out here to see what's going on and keeping him in your periphery, okay? If you're staring at him, then your partner has 10 players to referee all by himself, okay? So that's why we want to bounce the ball. Give it a good bounce, okay? Front court end line. Ball. Last year from COVID, they said we could bounce on the front court end line, but that was just a, I don't know if they're going to do that again. I hate it. I handed it anyways. Okay? Last thing, you always want to stand on the outside of the thrower in. So if the ball goes out of the sideline, let's say this is the sideline, and we're going this way, the thrower will be here, I'll be here. I don't want to be inside, I want to be outside. Same thing on the end line, right? You want to be outside. The only exception is, if the ball goes out on the end line and outside the three-point line, then you stand inside. Because if you stand outside, you're like in the next, in the ne next uh, area code, okay? Okay, that's a lot. There's again stuff in the same rule about violations or requirements for the throw-in. So, we'll get to those, but for right now we're going to split in half again, and we're going to practice a throw-in. You guys have anything for them? Okay? So if the ball goes out here, and I want the ball to come in here, a lot of times the kids will be somewhere where you, you know, they're just not where you want them. So you got to get them where you want them, right? You know, some kids will fight you on that. Say, you know, come on up here, and then we start. Oh, the last thing. Where do you bring the ball in, right? Did I tell the whole group or just a subgroup last week? The way, you the way you figure it out, there's a diagram in your mechanics manual. Draw an imaginary line from the elbow to the corner. Go around the top of the circle here. And another imaginary line from the elbow to that corner. Anything that goes out of bounds on the end line inside of here comes in on the end line. Or on the sideline. If it's, if it's in here, no, that doesn't make sense. It's going to come in where it went out. But if it's outside of that, if it's outside of that, then it's coming on the side. And it's going to be, like if the ball goes out of bounds, like here, right, then it's going to come in at the closest point on the sideline to me. It's not going to come in down there. You draw, draw a straight line to the out of bounds. And it's the same thing in here. If the ball goes out of bounds, like, okay, then it's going to come in right here. And you think this doesn't matter, but coaches are smart and they have plays and they want, they want you to be precise, okay? If the ball goes out of bounds underneath the basket inside like the lane lines, you don't want to bring it in there. You're going to bring it in on one side or the other side of the lane. Yeah? Does it matter which side? Um, yes. You want to, you want to bring it in on the side um, closest to where it went out. So and if, like right through the middle, like there's literally no way to tell. If it's right through the middle, then just stay on the side you were on so the trail doesn't have to do anything. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. No, no, that's, 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 that's good. good. That's yeah. a good analogy. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Okay, let's mix it up. I'm going to have some of you guys. I'm going to have the group that was over there down here and this group go over there. I'm here is just going to be excellent now. Scott. We're going to throw the ball to you. Okay, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be the per person you're giving the ball to. And then I'm going to be throwing it to Scott. 
So once you give it to me, remember, you do counting. As soon as I release it, you stop this. This arm is still up until he touches it. And then you chop the clock. Okay? basket the other team gets it you don't have to they just grab it and they start throwing in the, the play just keeps going you're not uh, handing it to them or tossing you don't have to get to them but you're still going to count yeah okay, and usually get... once you chop then you're count if, if it's going the other way if it's backcourt yes. you're count, you know, going like that to make sure that they've gone across the um yeah there's two different counts but that first count starts when the when the, the ball, new offensive player touches the ball when the, the ball starts. is at the disposal of the player. So what you see sometimes is, is players that are trying to get their team set up and so the ball's like right next to them but they're not picking it up. You can start your count. Okay? If they're honestly trying to get it, then wait till they get it. Okay? Just don't let them play with their head. And then on the other side, obviously you're rolling the ball and they're following it before they touch it. And you, But you don't start your count until they touch the ball. And that's when the clock starts. Right? Yeah, because once they've released it, you're not counting anymore, right? Yeah. But you're waiting to chop. No, I'm talking about when they're when trying to save time. You know, they're rolling the ball before it inbounds. You're trying to save time. Before right. Somebody but, picks it up. But you're not counting. You're just waiting to chop it. Right. 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 Because right. it's out of her hand. It's out of that player's hands. Yeah. Right. Two different so, counts. Two different counts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so Everybody knows, okay? 
You ask the player, are you ready? That's nice, right? You want them to be nice to us? We can be nice to them. Okay? Let's try it again. Okay. Oh, you want to start, right? I did. Let's do it on the sideline. So they step up a little bit away from me. Okay? You ready? I had 
the apprentice once, the first time she called a technical foul, same thing. The kids were mixing it up and she's like, uh, you stop doing that. Like she was, she didn't know what to say. But you just gotta say something, okay? You're fine. All right, let's see where these guys are. Nice and half because we can go through it. We don't have to be here till 8.30 if we cover stuff, so we'll keep moving, okay? Okay, the last thing, timeouts. Timeouts. Okay. Coach is yelling for a time. Well, first of all, who can call a timeout? A player and the coach, right? Okay. Um, if you hear, if the bench is back there and you hear somebody call timeout, can you call timeout? Yes. If? Isn't it if it's someone that is not supposed to call it, you can call it tech, right? <laughs> tech is going to be if, if, if you think somebody's trying to be deceptive, yes. But, you know, sometimes the fans will do crazy things, okay? So what you want to do is you want to try to get, either you recognize the coach's voice, right? You got all girl players and the coach and you've talked to him and you know what his voice sounds like, it's okay. But a lot of times you have to get a visual before you can call the timeout, okay? Ball's loose on the floor, right? And um, coach is yelling, timeout, timeout! Can you call the timeout? No. When can you call the timeout? When they have player control or team control. No, team control. If I, if I have the ball and you knock it out of my hand, I still have team control, right? You still can't call a timeout. It has to be player control. Okay? If, the, if I'm throwing a pass to Alston and it's 10 feet over his head, can the coach call timeout? Because? No player control. Okay, you guys are smart. Main basket? Main basket. Before, before it's at the disposal of the thrower in. Okay? Or if your team has possession, Obviously, any time you can call timeout on a throw-in, or um, I, on a th if there's a dead ball, either team can call timeout. Okay, but it's just when it's live that only the team with the ball can throw it in or can call a timeout, and only if they have player control. Okay. If anybody can call timeout like after first made free throw. They changed that this year, didn't or they? Last year, or was it the college? Can can. They can call timeout, as long as it's not in the free throw shoot. Okay. Okay. I, I want to keep my rule book separate. <laughs> okay. So, yes, yeah, so you can call a timeout. Okay. Anything? Even the de defense? On a free throw? Yeah. 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 What happens if they call a timeout and uh, the ball was in the shooter's hand? Is that a technical on the other team, or you just no, don't so grant the time? Just ignore. Just ignore. Just ignore. Just ignore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it's if it's their if it's that coach, they can call timeout. The other coach can't. You just ignore them. Right. Okay. Um, what happens if I call a timeout and I don't have any timeouts left? Yell Chris Weber. Exactly. Right? <laughs> now you're aging yourself because that was a long time ago. That was a very good game. <laughs> that was a hell of a game, but that was disappointing. Okay, so I call timeout. My, my, my coach is like, oh my God, we have no timeouts left. What's the, what's the consequence? They get the timeout, but it's a tech, isn't it? It's a, they get right. it, but it's a tech in addition to it. And then what happens with the ball? Uh, it would be the other team. The other team gets their, the, the, shoot, the shot, and then it becomes the other team's ball. At midcourt. At midcourt, yeah. Midcourt opposite. Okay, all you guys that are ready to call technical fouls. <laughs> Hold on a second, the ball always comes in after the free throws, mid-court opposite the table. Okay? Yeah. You said mid-court opposite, you mean mid-court opposite the scores table, correct? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah, keep going. They have a foul and then there's a tag. So there's a foul, mm -hmm. so foul. you blow your whistle, mm -hmm. so now the ball's dead, right? Unless it's in the air on a shot. Let's just say the ball's dead. And then something happens. And then there's a foul on the offensive team tech. Offensive team gets a tech after they get a shooting foul. 
Like they push somebody or? Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're two separate things. Mm -hmm. You adjudicate them in the order they happened, okay? So whatever the penalty was for the first foul, whether it's a one in one or two shot, whatever, you, sh you take care of it with nobody on the line. I'm assuming the other foul was by the other team, mm -hmm. okay? Nobody's on the line. And then the other team gets to send anybody they want to the free throw line for two shots and they take the ball out. Just do it in the order it happened and it, it makes, it's easy, okay? When it's happening, it's crazy, so that's why you wanna talk with your partner whenever you have a tee. Just make sure you're put, they're shooting at the right basket. I've seen college refs shooting the ball at the wrong basket, okay? Um, make sure the clocks, were, everything's right before you go out there and take care of it. Because the fact that you call the technical foul means for most people that you're pretty excited. It's kind of an emotional call and your head gets scrambled. So let your partner unscramble it. Okay? Yeah? Does the out of timeout technical go towards the coaches two or the three total towards the bench? It's an it's a indirect, isn't that? Indirect. Is it a direct or an indirect? Because if a player calls it, no, it's a team technical. It's, team it's a team technical. Yeah. It's not a coach technical, it's a team technical. Yeah. But all, all technical, all fouls, technicals, intentionals, whatever, they all count for the team foul count. Okay? So that's another good thing to check. If you call, if you have that situation that you just mentioned, right? So you have a foul, then you have a technical foul. Make sure that the, the table adds one to each side. Okay? Oftentimes they'll forget about the technical, one like it's. Foul, you're one team foul, correct. Yeah. Back on the question of handoffs, on a made basket, we are not responsible for getting that ball back to the inbounding player, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. They are just pick it up and go. If it's, Can you if start a count if they're just like, you know, sitting there? I, different, but I wait until they get possession. Okay. And then I'll start my count. If it looks like they're hustling yep. and yep. Yep. if yep. they're like, just like out there waiting just there. waiting for yeah. something, then let's get, get the, you yeah. let them see you, let them see that count. Cool. And but what about um, the other issue? Is your count should be approximately one second. Yes. Because sometimes people are going like that really right. fast, we were you know. About that and and it, you, your you five second count might like be two seconds. Like you're working on your toss. Work on that count and get that thing down there. Yep. You know when you're when you're doing it. Um, well, the, the clock stopped. There's there's like ten second backcourt. You can kind of use the clock to guide you, right? Like if you're too fast, but you knew it was on 1240, you know that at you know 1230 or at 10 seconds, right? But on the throw in, you just gotta make sure that you're, just go slower than faster, okay? Nobody's gonna complain if you give them an extra second or two. Well, the other team. Huh? The other team. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're doing it both ways. Go ahead, Scott. Excessive timeouts is administrative. So it goes to the team foul count, doesn't go to the head coach at all. It's an admin T, just so you know. Okay. But it's still a T, still shooting, still, yeah. same still change of possession. Still counts toward the team total. Somebody's gonna shoot it. If you have a technical foul, let's say Roger is playing and I call a T on him. Who can shoot the free throws? Anybody on the court or anybody? Anybody on the opposite other, team. Other team on court. Anybody on the other team. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens if, Chris, you're the best foul shooter on the team, but you totally airballed the first one? And I'm the coach. Can I have somebody else do the second one, or do you have to do both? I would have to do both. No. Okay. This is, these are these little nit naughty things. I've only seen one coach do that ever. I know. Yeah. <laughs> What's the situation when the opposing coach picks the player? He's coaching a prep, right? That, that's some, but like the men's college. That's not, we don't do that. I don't know so if, if there's an injury, let's say someone's going. Yeah, that's men's college. That's what you're talking about. I don't know if the NBA does that, but I know men's college does. Anybody else? Okay. Like everything else, there's rules about timeouts. They're in the rule book. There's case plays in the, in the case book. Look at them, get familiar with them because these weird things are gonna happen. Maybe not a lot, and you wanna be the smart ref, not the, oh God, what happened ref. Do over. Do over, yeah, mulligan. <laughs>
Okay. Okay, so how does Scott's the coach? And I'm the trail right here. And he yells a timeout. He yells for a timeout. Okay. Timeout, ref. So I'm going to make sure his team has player, his, there's somebody player control in his team. And then I'm going to time, wait. Okay? And then I'll ask, you know, if he doesn't say he wants a 30 or a 60, I'll ask him once. And if he doesn't respond, don't keep trying to ask him, he gets a 60. That's, okay? And you go like that? Like no. Six? You just, that's a full. Okay? That's, that's a three person. Okay, so he, I, I've called the timeout, right? And now I'm looking, checking with my partner to see where's the ball going to come in bounds. Okay, so let's say the ball was in the, on the block here. So where's the ball going to come in bounds? On the end line. Okay, so my partner is going to go and he's going to put the ball in eventually, right? So he's going to watch the players, obviously, but eventually he's going to be down there to put the ball in. Okay? So he started out as the lead over there, and I was the trail here. But since the ball was here, he's going to bring it in on this side, and eventually I'm going to go back there. Okay? You always want to be opposite from each other. Okay? So, so we've communicated. We know where the ball's coming in. We know who's going to get the ball. The way that I always keep track of who's going to get the ball, I put it on that hip. So for him, if the ball's going to stay this way, and he's facing the table, he puts it on this hip. Then when he's in La La Land during the timeout and he forgets, he's going to know we're going this way. Trust me, we all do it. I, I've done it. I have to ask my partner, which way are we going? <laughs> okay, so try to help yourself. So now, players are all going to the benches, and I'm in front of the table. I'm not on the table, I'm back from the table. Okay? And I'm waiting for the players to get to their benches, okay? Now I can report everything up to start the clock until they get to the, the benches. So I'm going to be out here, I'm going to say, it's the same as a foul, color number foul consequence, right? So you're going to say, white, coach, and you do it backwards to you, but frontwards to the bench, okay? White, coach, full time out, and this is where you want to make sure the players are all at the benches, start the clock. Because they don't start the clock till you tell them. And if you're out here and you're really fast and you say start the clock and half the players aren't there yet, then you're kind of screwing the coach out of a timeout. Okay? We want to keep coaches happy. Okay? So then that, that, that's, that happens there. And if, if it's a full timeout, I'm going to go to midcourt opposite, opposite the center circle and stand here. And if it's a 30 second timeout, I'm going to be in front of the circle and stand here until the timeout's over. Okay? Say what? The basketball's on the floor. No, he's got the ball. Okay? Why is that? So everybody knows where it's coming in? No, no, the 30 60 minutes. It's just a visual. Maybe the other coach didn't hear it, then he sees it. Okay? Does that make sense? Then now we're going to have a horn. 15 seconds before the end of the timeout, well, according to the book, you're going to have a horn 15 seconds before the end of the timeout. When you're doing little kid games and you have little kids keeping the table, you might not have that. Okay? But theoretically, there's a horn at 15, and when that happens, we tell the coach that's closest to us, the bench that's closest, first to our. Now, you don't have to get in their huddle. But just like if I'm at midcourt, I'm going to run down a few steps that way and tell that coach. He's going to tell this coach, okay? And then at the end of the timeout, we have another horn. So we have one at 15 and one at the end, okay? And by that horn, everybody should be on the floor and he should be able to put, ready to put the ball in play, okay? Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes they're straggling out of the huddle, okay? Work with them. But if it's a constant thing, we're not going to get into the details, but there's ways to address that if they're dragging their butts out of the hole, okay? But we're just talking about the timeout now. So, let's have, you want to do this all together or separate? Sure, well. the, the trail officials be here, one group, and the lead be over there. Okay, we're good. So I have the 
ball. I have the ball, and Scott's going to call a timeout. Timeout, ref. You're the ref. Yeah, timeout. Oh. You got a timeout, White. No, get with him. Just, just you don't have to get up to him, but just look at him. Who, who's, who's the lead? Which one of you guys? Which one? Yeah. Okay, so check with him, and you're going to say the ball's coming in right here, right? Because where am I? Yes, you're right here. So the ball's going to come in here. So he's going to stay there. Yeah, he'll stay there. He'll and stay there. And you're going to bring the ball. Yep. I'll report to the table first before I get the ball. Correct. Okay. If your partner's nice, your partner might get, get the ball for you and then bounce it back to you. Okay? Okay. Okay, so now go report to the table. Okay. We got a timeout on a coach. It's a 60 second timeout. Try it again. Color, Which number, coach? foul, process. Okay. Like time out. White. Time out. No, white. Don't, don't say time out. Just say white. White. Coach. Coach. 60 second time out. Start the clock. Perfect. Okay? Yes. Okay. Don't say what extra words because then nobody hears the table. If it's loud, they can't hear what you're saying. Okay. You just keep it short. Okay. Okay, okay next. So you go to that one and you come up here. This is where you Right. Time out. Wait. So you, you're calling time out, right? Yeah. Time wait. Everybody knows. Okay? Now what what's the second thing you do? No, don't worry about it. What's the next thing you do? Then report to the No, team. what's the next thing you do? Uh, talk to your leader. You, you want to figure out where's the ball coming in. Yeah. So you're going to communicate with your partner, and if I'm here, when you blow the whistle, where's the ball coming in? If, you are, if I'm here... If I'm, I'm the player, and you blew your whistle when okay. I hit the ball here, where's the ball coming in? Uh, it should be coming in on the side. On the side, right? Okay. Probably opposite of the table. Well... Either way. Okay, then on the same side. It's okay. That side. So you just tell your partner, ball's on the side, right? He knows, he nods his head, okay? Maybe he gets the ball for you. Okay. okay, now you go to the table. Okay. Time out. Uh, white. Coach. Time out. I need to start the clock. Yeah. Start the clock. Alright, white. White. Coach. Time out. Full time out. Start the clock. Full time out. Full time out. Start the clock. And when they start, when you give them the start the clock, what has to have happened? Before you say start the clock, what, what do you have to make sure of? That the players have left. And then, then you're going to go there. Excuse me, where are you going to go on a full timeout? This side of the Well, no, because you're bringing the ball in. Okay. This, this, is, this, is, this is a weird thing about two persons, okay? He's bringing the ball in, right? So you give him the ball back, and he's going to stand close to the throwing spot, but since, since it's by the bench, he's going to back up to like where he is, okay? And he's going to face the bench, and he's going to put the ball on the hip in the direction it's going. Now you're the one that has to stand here. I go in here. I go there. So he called a full timeout, so you're going to stand. Oh, the second ref is, is acknowledging the 60-30. Yes. Only, oh. it depends on who's throwing it in, right? Yes. So he's throwing it in. Yep. So then you have to do this. So I call the 60. So you're going to be behind right there. Gotcha. Okay? All right, next two. Okay. All right. Time out, Blake. Time out, Blake. Time out! Why? Where's the ball coming in now? <laughs> Baseline? Ball's right there. Yeah. Thank you. You don't, you don't, you don't have to keep your hand up. Got it. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> White coach, full time out, <laughs> start the clock. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I don't want you to be so close to the table. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because what happens if the other coach hated a call of his name, and you're right up there and you drop some F ball on it or something, you can't really do much because nobody heard it. But if you're back here and he says that, then it's easy to call a team. Okay? What if they don't say, that it's 60, and then they say, no, 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 30 seconds, or something like that. You ask them once, 
They don't respond, it's full. Well, what, the one thing I asked me is, well, what about 120 seconds? No, 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 no. Where's the ball? Thank you. Um, coach? I'm not So you're just making sure, right? Who's going to bring the are you the Are you the lead official? Okay, so just stay there. So you're going to bring the ball in, right? You're just you're going to still be the lead, okay? Kind of. Okay, so the ball's here. You call timeout. Then what happens? You you know where the ball's coming in. Okay, then what? You can go get it. You can go get it. Well, you, call, you call the timeout so okay. you know where the ball is. Okay. Okay. So it's over there. It's, it's right here because that's where I was. Okay. Right? Do we understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The circle Sorry. and the lines. Yeah. Okay. So it's right there. Right? Okay. So now you report. Thirty or sixty, coach. Don't get so close. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Oh. Why? So I don't ask him if he wants thirty or sixty. He doesn't tell him. We ask him right away. I oh, you did it. so when I when I when I do the whistle, okay. Because by now the players are there, you're never going to get his attention. You got it, you got it, you got it. Back up, back up. I don't want you in so close. Okay. I'm out. My coach. Oh, full full time. Okay. You start the clock when all the players are in the bench. Okay. So then what? It's full time up. So hold on. So you got. But he's making it in, so you're right at your spot. You say, thank you very much. Guess what? I shut it down. Right? Now you're up here. Now you, you're here. So we kind of switch. We switch up. You're not switching. He's, he's just gonna, you're going to stand at mid-court yeah. for the timeout, facing the table, because it was a full behind the circle. Right? And then at the end of the timeout, where are you going to go? Well, you, bring, you get the players back on, but then where are you going to go when we start? Right there. Okay. Does that make sense? Clear as mud. <laughs> Twelve. Full. Still have to do it for Yes. Yes. White. What? Ball's in there. Ball's there. We have uh, white. 30 second timeout. Uh, coach, 30 second timeout. Start the fight. Okay. Well, we don't have anything. We just have white, coach, simple words. Fall. Okay, do it again. White, coach, 30 second timeout. Start the clock. Perfect. Thank you. And then where are you going to stand? 30 second timeout. Okay? And then when the ball is in, he's bringing it here, so where are you going to go? Perfect. Okay, next go. I'm out. White coach. 30 or full? Full. Ball in the end line. Good. White coach. Full time out. Start the clock. Where do you stand? There's one thing I'm going to ask you guys that call the timeouts. Just try to use one arm. Okay? So you go. White time. Instead of. White time. Just use one arm. Whatever arm you want to use, I don't care. Okay? So, I have two things. Yeah. This is a double foul. This is a 60 second timeout. And if they want us to say 60 this year, in the last couple of years actually, instead of full. I don't know why. Maybe it's easier for the coach to remember 60. So this way, 60. They say it's like you're pulling taffy apart. So you look, come like this and then you spread your fingers out. Okay. Are you
30, 30 seconds. Uh -huh. oh. On the side? Do the do the sequence, do the recording then. Just report to the table. 30 second time on the coat. Color number. White. Oh. White team. White team. Coach. 30 second time on. Start. Start. Where are you going? So where's the ball coming in? Get the ball down. And where are you going? Record. So you're in front of the circle. You're in front of the circle facing the table.
White, Coach, 60 second, set the clock. And then you stand. Where do you stand after that? And then after the timeout? Opposite. Correct. Come out, please. Hello, White. Ball right here. Sure, do you are 60, please. White, Coach, 60 second timeout. Start the clock. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Did you do his report? He did. Yeah. And then where are you going to stand? 30? And then after the timeout? And then how are you going to put the ball in the box? You're going to come down here, right? And just bounce it's on the side right there. Yeah. Is it okay? Should I stand more off the tunnel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be on the bench. Thanks. Timeout. 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 30 or 60. Make sure you say the call so everybody knows. Time out, wait. Ball's on the sideline. What, is that the sideline or the other side? Sorry, end line. End line. I got a timeout, wait. Coach, 60. Start the clock. Um, it's a little bit early, but we're going to be done for the night, unless you want to talk about have more questions. Um, remember, uh, the, the session on Monday, if you didn't make it live, is posted on the website right now under recorded sessions. Make sure you find the right date because there's a lot of old sessions there. So find the right date. Um, we went over one, rules one, two, and four on Monday. So by next Monday, you should have completed quizzes one, two, and four. Okay? Now next Monday, we're going to go over three new rules, and the following week, those quizzes will be due. Okay, so the rules number and the quiz number matches. And we're not doing them all in order, so make sure you get the right ones. Okay? I don't know if you got my email, but we no longer have to do that health attestation when we come here. So the waiver and the vaccine card are enough. If you haven't sent me a waiver yet, please do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please ask me. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think what else. Saturday, we are having a general membership meeting, meeting on Zoom. Um, I sent you guys the link. We do these five, six times a year. How many times? Five. At least five. Yeah. Okay. And we have, you guys aren't officially in the association yet, so you don't have to attend. But typically we have to attend like three of the five, or I don't remember what the rules are. Um, so you're welcome to join to kind of see what goes on at these things. Um, like I said, I sent you the Zoom link. Starts at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Um, I think that's all. If you know of anybody else that wants to do this, bring them. We'll catch them up. Okay? Well, I met a few guys here on Tuesday night because I thought we had this on Tuesday night, too. <laughs> they might want to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> There's six or eight guys yeah. playing half court. What'd you go through? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are there any referees in training here? They're like, what, dude, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
I'm like, no, we were training here. We're supposed to be here on Tuesday and Thursday. They're like, man, we don't know what you're talking about. Let's take a That's hike. a good recruit. Okay, so, so, yeah, so, good. so next week we're going to the same time here. Monday we're going to do the same time online. And uh, yeah, like we're almost halfway through this already. We just started. We're almost halfway through. Okay, please contact me or any of these other guys if you have questions. If you get stuck on a test question and you want to talk about it, feel free to ask us. Okay. How soon after we finish the program, are we going to be graphic games? Uh, well, the next day. <laughs> if John had his way, you would be graphic games tonight. However, once you finish this, I won't release you to him until you've actually refed a scrimmage. Because you can do all these things and look perfect, and then you start running around in live action and you don't know which ends up. So I'm going to get, see if I can get some scrimmages between the end of training and Thanksgiving because the Thanksgiving weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's hundreds of games and they will want your bodies if you're available. Okay? As we get closer to the end of training, I'll talk, tell you how to do, use Arbiter. Does anybody work other sports and so they know how to use Arbiter, a few people? Okay, but we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the state requirements. There's a bunch of stuff, but right now we're just trying to get you to figure out how to stand on the floor and how to do these things, okay? If you want to get ahead of yourself, there's videos online on the website, how to use Arbiter, how to do all these other things. So if you want to get ahead, feel free. Anybody else? You guys, Harold? Just, just work on those signals, I'll tell you. You come out that first day and you hit a strong bang that first foul you call, Man, the co you, you'll, your problems will go away, will ease up tremendously. So stay in the mirror, work on those good, strong signals. Strong uh, whistle. Will, yeah, strong whistle, and uh, it will help go a long way. So. Okay. Grant, you got anything, Scott? Strong whistle, and, you know, like Harold said, strong mechanics will, you know, will point you to coach if you know what you're doing or don't know what you're doing. Right. Oh, another new guy. Oh. <laughs> All right, you guys are free to go.